hyperbole. An advice podcast for deaf and, and friends to make exaggerated statements not meant to be taken literally. What was that, Stefan? Hi- 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 hyperbole. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hyperbole, a self help podcast for the helpless. My name is Stefan, and I'm your host. Unfortunately, today I am co hostless, co host free, sans co host, but. In lieu of a co-host, I have a very special <laughs> guest today. Everybody, please clap your hands that we can't hear for Carista K. <laughs> What's up, guys? Happy to be here. Oh, thank you so much <laughs> for joining. It's a real pleasure to have you on. Yay, I know. I need to get to Phoenix and actually hang out with you guys. You seem fun. <laughs> I, I know, I know. We almost we almost set something up, but it looks like you changed your plans just a little bit, so you're not going to be in Phoenix soon but uh, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself you are actually no i'll let you do it i was about to say it okay you're like let me tell you what i know (laughs) um (laughs) well i live in las vegas i'm originally from south dakota i was working as a therapist actually in south dakota and then i was picked to be on a reality tv show called my giant life which airs on tlc and unfortunately it got canceled but whatever um but that that's a tv show that actually brought me here to vegas and they wanted to do a storyline of me getting into stand-up because i had mentioned that i wanted to just try it just to try it you know uh-huh. and um yeah so i was really lucky because i entered the comedy scene with a tv credit so that has been awesome. And I'm six foot five, so I'm, you know, different. Literally have a different view of life than everyone else. So <laughs> yeah. So now I do full time comedy. I have a children's book out. So that's fun fact as well. Um I don't even know. What else you wanna know? I got a bunch of stuff. <laughs> no, that that's pretty cool. So I'm six four. I'm almost at your level, but no, that's not, cute. Not I remember cool. being six four. <laughs> <laughs> it's like middle school. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but that's pretty amazing. And you also have a master's in psychology, right? I do. Yeah. So you're pretty intelligent. And I was gonna also say, so you've been doing comedy. You also have a pretty positive outlook on life. I, I listened to a podcast that you were on and you were talking about manifestation and positivity and how you yes. were able to do some amazing things. Like you met yep. Tony Robbins. That made my whole 20, year 2020 so far. So I'm like, oh, I've accomplished everything so far that I want. <laughs> that's, that's pretty amazing. I love him so much. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I know that this whole podcast is based on a satire of self-help, but I'm a big self-help guy and I love mm-hmm. listening to Tony Robbins. I also, mm-hmm. you were talking about it a little bit on the podcast that you were on, but Jim Carrey, his, He's the best. he is. And his speech that he gave for a, it was a commencement speech somewhere, but it really resonated with me. And I think I've listened to it six or seven times. It is just oh yeah, really. I know exactly funny. what you're talking about. So funny. Yeah. I know yeah. exactly which one you're talking about. And I think he, you quoted something from him that I remember he said also in that speech. I'm not sure if that's where you got it from too, but it was similar to manifestation, but you don't have to really worry about how to get what you want. You just, mm-hmm. just keep working at it and it'll come to you. I really like that. Right. Yeah, you kind of have to let go of how it just comes to pass or whatever. When, yeah, when you put your intention out there and then things just fall into place. It's crazy. Yeah, I think I also said on that podcast, like, I had, I tried to meet Tony Robbins, like, two other times at his actual events because you think that's where you would meet meet him, right? Right. No, I met him on, like, when I had floor seats at the UFC fight. (laughs) And I was like, keep it together, Krista. You're going to get kicked out. (laughs) Because, <laughs> like, he's taller than me, and bo- well, taller than both of us. Yeah. So I was like, hug me, and <laughs> I just wanted him to hold me. So Did I know he's married, so probably should not do that. But <laughs> she uh... wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm bigger than her anyway. What is she going to do? I was just about to say, yeah, you could totally take her in a fight. So you've been doing comedy for about three years, right? And, mm-hmm. and you've been performing in Las Vegas. Phoenix, you performed before, and Mm -hmm. California and some other states? Yep, I've done California, and then um, the past two summers, I've actually gone up to South, back to South Dakota and produced some of my own shows. So, um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Deadwood, South Dakota, but I had like a little residency. It's like a mini Vegas. 
and it also has like a TV show called Deadwood. Oh, isn't yes. this funny? Like the sunlight's coming in, and I'm just like starting to blend in with it. Like that's how white I am. That's I fine. thought I thought this podcast was going to turn into Touched by an Angel because you started to glow a little <laughs> bit. So I thought you were going to like, send me some messages sure. from God. It's so funny. I'm like, hey, can you uh, you know take to my friends? I'm like, take some pictures of me on stage, and it just looks like I'm like this little like white. I just am the spotlight. I'm like, cool. Anyway. What was I talking about? I don't remember. <laughs> you were talking about in South Dakota, Deadwood, you put on some shows. Yeah. So I had a little residency at a casino called um, Cadillac Jacks, and then just a few other bars. And I always go back to work the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. So I do some bartending and comedy and stuff like that. So a lot, a lot of Midwest stuff. And then actually in April, I'm going to uh, Australia. I'm going to have a little comedy tour in Australia for like three weeks. So... That's amazing. I know. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's gonna be fun. So have yeah. you have you been practicing any Australian material? Can you do the accent? Well, oh, <laughs> it's so funny because like uh, actually last night at my show there was a bunch of Australians in the crowd and they were the rowdiest group. It was so funny. Um, but I actually used to play uh, professional basketball in Australia. So yeah, wow. I love Australia. So, wow. but I do need to work on my accent. I don't even know. I sound stupid. There are like six shows on Netflix that are Australian that have helped me with mm -hmm. the accent. Zumbo's Just Desserts, which is a competitive baking show, but patisserie focused. And then, oh, there we go. And then Instant <laughs> Hotel, which is all, it's like this competitive Airbnb show. They're just oh. empty calorie TV. Yeah, they, they're interested in some weird stuff like over there. Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> they're different. Well, thank you so much, Christopher, for joining. We're going to get into yeah. the self-help part of the podcast. And we like to Perfect. start off with an inspirational quote to be able to fuel us to give the wisdom and sage advice to our listeners. I'll first ask, do you have any inspirational quotes? I know we touched on Jim Carrey, but do you have any inspirational quotes that help get you through the day or help push you forward? Oh, my God. There's so many. Um, actually, I listened to Kevin Hart speak the other day. The other day, I was like at a conference where he was one of the speakers, and he said, um, it's you versus you. So it's just like such a good reminder to not, not worry about what everyone else is doing. And literally, the, the main goal is to conquer yourself. You know, it's you're the only one that matters, you know. So you can't worry about, oh, somebody got this gig, but I wanted it, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, everyone, you know, there's room for everyone to be successful. So you just, you just have to do your own best and you're your own competition, so. I think that's so true and it rings really true. To me, I was very nervous to have you on the podcast. So I, I stood up tall in front of the mirror for about three minutes and I was pumping myself up. I put there we in, go. I put in Remember the Titans, the speech from Denzel Washington. So <laughs> that really helped. You're like, yeah. Um, also, my other favorite quote is, life is short and so are you. You can, you can use that one if you want, because you're taller than most people, too. That's awesome. That, that, one's just, that, that one's actually a mean one. Maybe I should shut this. Should I shut this? Oh, you're good. It's okay? Okay. I'm just like, I'm slowly turning into a ghost. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> this is audio only, so we can describe to the listeners that you look perfect. The lighting is great. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. I'm fucking flawless. <laughs> 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 all right, so we're going to read a quote, and the person that wrote this quote is not a person at all. It's actually a robot called Inspirobot. And so what Inspirobot does is it's an AI-driven machine, and it generates some of the most motivational words, mashes them together for a beautiful inspirational quote. Okay. It also has a beautiful picture that it puts and associates with the quote. So if you guys haven't followed us on Instagram, follow us there. We post the pictures with the quote. Anyway, this week, Inspirobot says... Whenever you are pretending to be somebody you're not, don't forget to shut up. Oh. Yeah. I really kind of, like that. Kind of a left turn at the at the end of that. But like, which is so true because everyone, I feel like so many people are like pretending to be somebody else. Have you ever been around those people that like, you're like, oh, you're really cool. But you're like, uh, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one with them. Then they get around other people and they just, they don't know who they are anymore. So they try to like cater to what they think people want them to act like all the time so maybe we should just tell those people if they're they're mixed up just tell them to shut, shut up, up. 
I can't even think of better advice than that. <laughs> I love it. All right. I feel like we're fueled and we're ready to go on to the, the meaty part of the podcast. Yeah, let's do it. All right. We're going on to the meaty part and this part's called the, 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 the beef. And this is where we've got questions from fans. We've got celeb advice. We've got business advice. Everything a self-help podcast should contain. So we've got a question or a fan found this from Reddit. Thank you, Lee. It says, need help finding the perfect moment for a kiss. A bit of a backstory. This guy and I made out a couple times ac across about three weeks clubbing together, but then I called it off completely to focus on other stuff. We're friends now, but I'm realizing that I actually do like him and I want to kiss him again, but have it be different to our previous sleazy club kisses. I know he's a bit of a romantic, so I think he will take well to a rom romantic moment. The problem is, whenever I'm with him and want to kiss, the moment never feels right. Either because we're in a space that pushes us apart like a cinema, with chair arms that don't go down, or because the activity is way too exciting. Like mini golf. I just want a relaxed moment where we are close to one another and there's a romantic atmosphere. I'm thinking like, romance movie romantic. Recommendations, please? Sincerely, Hocus Pocus. Wow. So I think my biggest question is this club scene, was there a lot of alcohol involved? You know what I mean? Right. So then they could get really That's drunk to kiss again, right? See? Yeah. So if you just <laughs> like do whatever you want, but make sure you're hammered, That's you know? Beautiful. So go to mini golf, but this time just bring a handle of vodka. And then you're yeah. Like, see, <laughs> I feel like alcohol could, they feel all the, you know, most of the passionate kisses, my opinion. <laughs> I think you're kind of right. Nothing says romance like a picnic in the light of day with a bottle of vodka again. Or wine. Right? Maybe. <laughs> because he sounds like he's too in his head. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't think about this, like the details of the first kiss that much. So, because mm. it just happened because he was probably hammered. And now he's all sober and being weird. It's like, no, dude, just drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He should have listened to Kevin Hart. The biggest enemy is him. It's just getting in his way. Yeah. Exactly. What it's your you, own fault for being sober. If I may ask, what's the most romantic way you've gotten kissed? Oh, my God. <laughs> sober or? It, <laughs> it, it can be either. It can be either. Let's see. Romantic. Huh. Again, I am single in Las Vegas, so, you know, romance doesn't really happen here. But um, let's see. You've got like a mini Eiffel Tower. You've got the New York skyline. <laughs> It's, uh, it's so romantic. Yeah, that's true. Well, there was this one time where uh, this guy was like seven feet tall. And so naturally Dang. he's like my soulmate. Oh. And then, yeah, it was like he had to like bend down to kiss me a little bit. And I was like, I'm just a small little girl. So <laughs> anyway, so that, that was kind of cool and pretty unique. So I don't know about romantic. Oh, that's pretty cute. I <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Have you ever seen something on TV that's romantic? Because the first thing that I think of, probably one of the, rom the most romantic kisses of all time, Lady in the Tramp. Mm. Oh, yeah. Where you're like, oops. And there's food involved, you know? So it's even better. You're not even hungry when you're wanting to kiss. You don't actually accidentally bite them on the lip or something. <laughs> yeah. Oops, sorry. You I thought you were a noodle. <laughs> so, so maybe just get a big bowl of spaghetti to split. There you go. I See? Might be good. I haven't had any cool kisses like that. No Spider Man, you know, no one's ever been hanging upside down. The the I think the most romantic kiss I've ever had was with my wife. It was our first kiss and I took her to an Italian restaurant. I liked her. She liked me, I think. Yeah, she did. But anyway, so we had these little, the little breadsticks, the thin ones, the crack. Yeah. So I told her in Italy, there's a tradition where I take one end, you take the other end. And then whoever breaks off the biggest piece gets to make a wish. And she was like, wow, that's so cool. And I said, yeah. And so she takes it and I say, no, no, you don't take it with your hand. You take it with your mouth. Ooh, boy. And I got rejected immediately. So... <laughs> So, but in the car ride to, to go dance, she was offering me a piece of gum and she was like, in Brazil, there's the same tradition. And so it was her. She, she put the magic on me. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Oh, fun. We were also wasted. So I think alcohol is the real, See? the real thing. That is the moral of the story. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Probably my best guess is I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there might be some truth to that for me. So uh, moving yeah. on. No. Yeah. All yeah. right. I think that's good. We offered some advice. Just get really drunk. So mm-hmm. we're going to move on to the next segment. This is celeb advice. Now, celebs may seem like near perfect examples of human beings. And they are, but they get in a pickle sometimes too, which is why we dedicate a segment of our show to give them even more attention. It's time for Celeb Advice. We're about to read an article, and then we're going to give that celebrity some advice on how to do better. But before we do, I I usually take this time to ask our guests if they can do any celebrity impressions. Oh, geez. I don't know. I feel like mine are just all from Fargo because that's close to where I'm from, you know? Oh, I've never like, seen Like, oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like my Midwest. I, I don't even think I have an accent, and then I go back there, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is how I talk. Um. Like, uh, it kind of <laughs> reminds me. I was I was in South Dakota, and uh, this lady, she had just gotten done taking out the trash, and she's like, oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I got ranch on my boot. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, that's the most Midwest thing I've ever heard in my life. Because we like ranch dressing up there. <laughs> so more more so than like a celebrity impression, just like an entire, you know, region of the country. I don't know who I'd impersonate. Although I do get told that I look like Anna Ferris. So she's you, like my little mini me doppelganger. You, you do. And that's a very nice thing because I usually get that I look like Benedict Cumberbatch and I hate it. <laughs> I don't see it. I mean, maybe a little bit. I, I, I put the laptop at an angle so you wouldn't be able to see it. Cause, okay, got you know. it. Oh, anyway. <laughs> anyway. All right, so let's dive into this. Now, this juicy gossip comes from Perez Hilton. It says, Mark Wahlberg has some painful advice for Post Malone and his tattoos. This will only hurt a lot. On Thursday, Mark Wahlberg caught up with E! News at the premiere of his upcoming Netflix film, Spencer Confidential, where the actor shared some painful advice for his co-star rapper Post Malone. Known for his eclectic array of face tattoos, Wahlberg joked that the Hollywood's bleeding singer is going to be in for a rude awakening if he decides to part ways with them. I'm going to try to go for a Mark Wahlberg. I told him. Eventually, he's going to want to remove this, and uh, it's going to be painful, he told E! News exclusively. It's more painful than taking them off. I've had mine all taken off already. Back in the day, Wahlberg, or Marky Mark as he used to go by, sported several tattoos across his toned physique and had them all removed. Among them was a bold shoulder tattoo that read Wahlberg that was placed between the letters M and W. Now, should Post remove his tattoos? Do you know who Post Malone is, by the way? I yeah, I do. Okay. And I don't understand. The fa- face tattoos are so ballsy. You just have to hope that he, like, keeps his career going. Because you know how sometimes stars fall down? Wow, that was really poetic. I feel like that blows I know, me. and I didn't even mean to. You know. <laughs> it sounds like an emo song that I heard back in high school. <laughs> really? Right? <laughs> um... <laughs> But yeah, and then like they're forced to get some normal job and they're like, you can't with that base. Oh yeah, imagine Post going into accounting after that and going for an interview and he's like, look, I'm CPA certified. I know Excel backwards and forwards. And they're like, well, the face tattoos. <laughs> yeah, and like the, uh, um, I was a, I've been, or I've been a server, you know, and they, they used to say, uh, tattoos are okay as long as you can cover them up so it's like would he just wear a mask that would be even more creepy right like that, that would be like you're robbing the place so <laughs> yeah like can i take your order <laughs> <laughs> they're like shouldn't like... you be on the other side what's going on here <laughs> yeah. he's like i work here i'm just covering my tattoos <laughs> He oh, just man. gets giant tips from it because they're scared. <laughs> Maybe oh, that's yeah. a good plan. That, yeah, that actually <laughs> is a good plan. Just or a huge hockey mask like Jason. I think it'd be pretty good. But I, feel, I know. So, yeah. I feel like he. Cause wait, no, I don't think Travis Barker from Blink One Eighty Two got face tattoos. I think he got them all the way up to his neck, but then he stopped mm-hmm. there because even he was like, "Oh, face tattoos are a little over the top." Okay, let's not. <laughs> Let's not and a turtleneck will fix that. Yeah, see? Right, right. A turtleneck forever for the rest of your working <laughs> yeah. days. We'll fix that. Um, I also, so do you have any tattoos, if you don't mind me asking? I do, actually. Um, I have, like, a few. They're not, they're not huge. Um, see, what was my first one? Um, 
I have stars all down my side. Oh, and, nice. Uh, yeah, I have I have uh, I have it with a, a good friend of mine, and it means uh, friends are like stars. You can't always see them, but you know they're always there. Uh, I'm sensing a theme with you and stars. Uh, Isn't that weird? Yeah, very, what's going on? Uh, very mm. celestial. Yeah. Is, yes, I have a little unicorn. Oh, yeah. Look how cute it is. That's um, that, a pretty adorable unicorn. Yeah, because like this one is. Basically, well, when I was filming that show, uh, I filmed it with this girl of 6'9", and we'd always yes. be like, we're unicorns! Because, like, statistically, being, like, the height that we are and female is, like, 0.001% of the world. So I'm like, that's pretty close to a unicorn. So. I, I actually <laughs> have a unicorn one, too. Me and Benedict Cumberbatch, because we look like each other, and it's really hard to look that fucked up. So That's uh, right. <laughs> That's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's rare. Yeah, it is. It is. Anyway, um, so yeah, he should remove his face tattoos, right? I mean, I, oh my God, can you imagine? I've known some people that have gotten tattoos removed, and apparently it's like a hundred times worse pain-wise than oh. getting them. So I don't know. I so, don't know, but then, like, what else, What would he look like without them? I feel like he's not Post Malone with no tattoos. face tattoos. Isn't that, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Could he do, like, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage in Face Off? Didn't they get a new face? I think so, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so Mark Wahlberg was, like, basically telling them that, that he should remove them, right? Right, right. What was Post Malone's response? This is this is juicy. Oh man, I don't know what Post Malone said. Well, you know, like, cause okay, so do you have tattoos? I have zero. Like, I'm, I'm zero, looking yeah. to get one right on the face, but I'm not sure what I want to get see. yet. Maybe like familia, cause I'm Italian. But... Yeah, see, I think so. Or like some teardrops. <laughs> and then you probably have to start killing that many people. Just like do it backwards. This I didn't realize that you get those for killing people. <laughs> why I, I feel like you should get a gun or something but it's like are you sad is that showing remorse for killing someone mm, so it's not a real tear so it's just like I tried to be sad but I couldn't actually be sad so here's a teardrop tattoo <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I tried to be sad but I'm not so here's me pre <laughs> pretending to be sad about it <laughs> wow well, <laughs> well, what I can say about tattoos is, like, I start forgetting that I have them because they just become part of you and part of your body. And so, obviously, Post Malone is a big fan of tattoos, which apparently, I mean, I would assume means something to him. So, I wonder if he was offended because that's basically, like, um, you should change your face because however you like it is not cool. And you're like, what? That's a good point, because maybe Marky Mark felt some remorse for his tattoos, but maybe Post is really committed to all of his tattoos that he did right. when he was 16 or 17 or 18. Yeah. I, saw... I mean, they look like shit, but, you know, they're who am all... I to judge? They're just if you all... want your face to look like <laughs> Right. They're, they're just all over the place, too. I don't feel like he really coordinated it very well. No, not at all. I don't understand. But, again, it, if it becomes part of you then you're you're talking about something different not not just tattoo you know it's like right. mm, maybe fix your face well this is my face though <laughs> you know yeah maybe just get more tattoos so it doesn't look like yeah maybe like connect them all with something like some yeah. stars maybe you know oh there we go yeah beautiful <laughs> shiny falling be like stars. the universe <laughs> see the planet revolves around me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, and he, like how he sings, he does not look, he does not look like he sings, if that makes sense. Yeah, he looks like he sings in back of the McDonald's near the fryer. That's where he looks like he sings. Right. And then if you were to just try to picture what he would look like just hearing his voice. Yeah. All right. Any <laughs> other, any other advice before we get to the next segment? Um... I don't know. If you want to look a certain way, fucking look at look like that. You know who cares what Mark Marky Mark whatever the fuck like says. <laughs> Marky Mark. Yeah, I don't think Marky Mark's made a lot of wise decisions. 
in his life. No. So I don't think uh-uh. you really have to follow his advice post. Well, and it's like, why even say something like that? You know, like, I don't even know. And and I'm such a, <laughs> like, just me being tall, right? So right, right. I've had a lot of people like just, you know, it's mostly men. that are like, oh, you make me feel like less of a man. I'm like, well, you are. But anyway. Wow. Um, <laughs> Do you guys see that? Yeah, absolutely. It's in my stand up. Nice. For sure. Because, um, yeah, I'm like, whatever. I get a lot of comp- comments about my height. So I'm like, that's fine. Keep them coming. It's just material for my job. So thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, and it's like, I don't even know when I started thinking about this. Probably high school because I'm like, there's a difference because there are people that say something and they're rude or they say something and they're just curious, right? So it's like, I think when there's an intention to be mean, they have their own insecurities as well because it's like who cares if somebody else has face tattoos you know what i mean so i'm like marky mark why are you saying that like what's going on with you you know what i mean like right so it's his reflection of of how he's feeling about himself i always like to give um you know the example of oprah like she struggled with her own weight you know her whole life Mm -hmm. but she's not out there trying to bring people down you know what i mean like i don't feel good about myself so get rid of your face tattoos it's like what well (laughs) why actually perez hilton does say that oprah said that post malone does need to lose a couple pounds okay oh shit well she can she's eating bread so that's just a marketing ploy i think (laughs) (laughs) all right well let's move on to the end Thank you so much for okay. joining us, Krista. We really appreciate it. Where yeah. can people find you? What shows do you have coming up? What Are you making another children's book? What, tell us everything, everywhere to go for fans to buy your shit, see you live, everything. Yay. Perfect. Okay, so let's start with children's books. Um, so it's on Amazon Kindle. It's on Amazon. It's in hardcover, softcover. It's on Barnes and Noble. It's on Walmart.com. Whoa! And it is called. I know. I got. Yeah, I got a notification that Walmart picked it up, and I'm like, I have made it. Just nice. <laughs> it's just. It's just the online. So calm down. <laughs> um, so, and it's called Ahead Above the Rest. It's a children's picture book. It's dedicated um, to. You know, just uh, owning who you are, owning your differences. So they're all different types of animals, and they have their own struggles. And uh, the moral of the story is when you learn to love yourself, you can be ahead above the rest no matter how tall you are. So Aww. there's that. Yeah. And then, Are there um, any stars in the book? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I know there's a butterfly. I, um, I don't – yeah. Maybe I'll have to look at the illustrations again. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I like butterflies, too. So I made sure to put one of those in there. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, all my social media is Krista K Comedy. And that's K-R-I-S-T-A-K-A-Y. And then Comedy with a C. We didn't go with the K on that that's one. That's a good choice. Smart choice. We need to keep the Ks to only two in a row. Yeah. That's very good. Um, (laughs) and then let's see, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do another children's book yet or not. Um, but I do want to do like a, like an adult, like self-help book actually, just like a kind of a guide to self-confidence, stuff like that. Oh, nice. Um, Face your fears, not face tattoos. Exactly. See, there we go. Um, uh, yeah, cause like, I don't know, so long ago I... I was like, wow, cool. I'm not going to get any shorter. So I'm either going to be miserable and hate everyone for talking about it all the time, or I'm just going to embrace it. And, yeah, and I think that is something that, you know, I was forced to decide on because of just, like, the body that I'm in. But I think right. everyone can decide that kind of stuff with whatever they're dealing with. So Like looking like yeah, so... Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> yeah. You just have to accept it, man. <laughs> You're like, just fucking let it go. You just, <laughs> just got to own it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and, and by the way, that'll all be in the show notes. So guys, you can go on down, click, and you can click on all those links. So a- anything oh, else? By the way, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. 
Uh, oh, I think upcoming shows. So I've been opening up for Anthony Cools. So um, that's Tuesday and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the Paris Casino. So I just started doing that. That's pretty cool. He's the longest running um, comedy hymnist in Las Vegas. Wow. So I'm the opener and then I get to watch people be hypnotized, which is different every time, which blows my mind. It's crazy. Um, so that's exciting. And then um, I have a couple of my own shows that I run here in Vegas. They're always uh, every Thursday. And let's see. I have an Australia comedy tour coming up. The first nice. show is April 1st in Perth, Australia. Western Australia. So, yeah. We've got a bunch of stuff coming up. Crikey. I was about to ask, not to derail this whole thing, but what is a <laughs> Vegas crowd like? Because I, I we've got some <laughs> Phoenix crowds and you've got your LA crowd in New York. But what's a Vegas crowd like? Um, it just kind of depends. Like, if you're doing a local show, um, you, you know, it can be, like, local meaning off the strip. Right. Um, it's, I mean, kind of up and down a little bit. You know, you could have, like, all old people all of a sudden. Like, I perform at some casinos that I swear to God only old people go to. So, I'm like, cool. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so there's, like, that. But, um, so... Like on the Strip or on Fremont Street, they're usually like, like ready to party, which is so fun. Nice. And so, yeah, like last night, those crazy Australians, and I don't even know. There was like the night before, I I don't even know what I asked. I mean, I do some crowd work, right? And I don't even know what the hell, like what prompted this guy, but he's like, I'm getting head right now. I'm like, okay. Oh like, Lord. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, wow. And you just never know. I mean, it literally changes from night to night, from venue to venue. You you have no idea. So wow. it's um it's not very predictable. <laughs> like I wish it was, but it's just yeah, it's not. But wow. the, you know, for a comic you just have to keep I guess like accommodating yeah. to whatever the hell they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just have so much respect for you. One, for just being a comic, because I feel exactly like you're saying. You have to constantly adapt. You have to push through. You have to... Because I feel like every 15 seconds, you're asking for validation through laughter. And if you don't get that, it kind of crushes a little bit. So mm -hmm. the fact that you're doing this night after night to different crowds with different attitudes and different tastes and all that, and you're just mm -hmm. crushing it, which it looks like you are. Uh, besides that, you've done a TV show. You've written a children's book. I, I And still maintaining such a positive attitude. I feel like, I know you said on your last podcast that you were on, you were going to meet Oprah. And I feel like, I just feel it. You're going to. Yeah, I have to. She's so cool. I'm like, oh, I just want, yeah. That's like, that'd be a dream come true. But then, so here's like another thing where, you know, like the manifestation thing. It's like, yeah, that's the goal. But right. then I'm like, well, I need to make myself into a person that she would want to talk to you know what i mean so nice. i'm like challenge accepted nice. so so i'm doing all the stuff and uh yeah it's um it's fun because i also don't want to lose i mean i have a master's degree so i want to keep doing things you know like whether it's writing a book or maybe doing some speaking or something where i don't feel like i've completely like not using my degree because Cause I, I do like that kind of stuff and I, yeah. And it, you know, I worked hard on that. So I'm like, I, yeah. I have a lot of information that I, that I feel like I can get out in the world somehow. So yeah. Nice. Did, when you started writing jokes, did you see, did you find that, <laughs> I don't, did you write the jokes <laughs> where you had to dumb them down a little bit because of your writing, your masters, all of your intelligence where you're like, <laughs> people might not get this or yeah I've definitely written jokes like this where I'm like that is so clever and that's so right. good like and then it's you know then you say it and people are like what <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like damn it um yeah like people yeah <laughs> I mean <laughs> the shortest answer is yeah <laughs> Oh, man. Well, thank you so much, Krista, for joining us. I just wanted to say, by the way, guys, if you have not, subscribe, tell a friend, and review us. It, 
you just listened to 45 minutes of free content. So just go over, leave a five star, say thank you so much for all the delicious content that you're providing with these amazing guests like Krista K. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Krista. And uh, thank you, everybody. We'll talk at you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hyperbole.